Last time, we talked about whether time is real, and you may think that the answer to that question is obviously yes. I mean, look! Remember our distinction last time between A theory and B theory views of time, where A theory says there really is past, present and future, and time passes as it flows between them, and B theory says there's no such thing as the present or the passage of time, and all times exist equally. Some philosophers have suggested that A theory is obviously true, because we experience the passage of time, and it's those arguments based on experience that we're going to be looking at today. In 1956, A. N. Pryor wrote a very famous article called Thank Goodness That's Over, arguing for the passage of time. He said that we have different attitudes towards different bits of time. For instance, you might have a painful experience and not enjoy it, but then later on you might express relief that it's over. It doesn't matter! It's in the past! He said that wouldn't make sense unless the painful experience had moved into the past, unless it wasn't part of present reality anymore. In a B universe, all times exist equally, so it doesn't make sense to say, thank goodness that's over, because it isn't. He actually doubled down on this because Pryor didn't believe that the past and the future really existed, but the main point to take away from the argument is Pryor thought that our attitudes could only be explained if time actually passed. Is this a good argument? Nah, not really. Our attitudes towards time could actually be explained in a B universe. What we need to realise is that we could have different attitudes towards the same thing if it's expressed differently. So we might say there is a bear in the conservatory and be pretty indifferent to that, but then say there is a bear in the same room as me, i.e. the conservatory, and suddenly we've expressed the same proposition but we might have very different feelings about it. <laughs> Consider also Lois Lane loves Superman and Lois Lane loves Clark Kent. Even though the propositions actually express the same thing, namely that Lois Lane is in love with this particular individual, she might have very different feelings about them. Similarly, we might say, thank goodness that's over, and feel relief that we don't feel when we say, thank goodness that experience is located at time t, which is earlier than the indexically defined present, but that doesn't mean they don't actually express the same proposition. So Pryor's argument doesn't really fly. But it's based on attitudes. What if instead of feelings, we said that we know time passes because we experience it passing, the way we experience anything else. We just feel it moving all around us. Well, DC Williams has a very clever argument saying that we don't actually experience the passage of time. If time is passing, it must be passing in some direction. For instance, this way as opposed to this way. So if we experience the passage of time, we necessarily experience the direction of time. But Williams imagined a time-reversed doppelganger, somebody who lives in a universe in which time flows in the opposite direction from the way that we think it does. We'd have to imagine that physics and entropy was backwards as well, so they'd absorb energy from their environment and take poo and turn it into food, and it would all seem very odd to us, but they would think it was normal. They would have experiences similar to ours. So experience cannot be a guide to the direction of time, and therefore experience cannot be a guide to the passage of time. Now, some philosophers think that a time reverse doppelganger would be impossible, and I'll leave you to talk about whether or not it is in the comments, but recent metaphysics is really embracing this Williams idea that the passage of time couldn't be experienced even if it was happening. In 2012, which is very recently in philosophical terms, so we're right at the cutting edge of metaphysics here, Simon Prosser said that there is and could not be any experience of time passing. He asks a very simple question. Which one of your experiences is the experience of time passing? Experience doesn't come in one amorphous blast. It happens in discrete chunks. You have an experience of an orange, or an experience of a cloud, or of Olivia Wilde, if you're very lucky, and it's maybe not entirely clear how that works, but each one of your experiences in some sense matches up to some unique object in the world, and that's what makes it an experience 
of that thing as opposed to an experience of any other. Prosser calls this the uniqueness constraint. But when it comes to the passage of time, surely all of your experiences are equal candidates for the title, the experience of time passing. None of them will satisfy the uniqueness constraint more than any other. You don't actually have an experience of time passing. Moreover, you couldn't have one. The passage of time isn't something that could be experienced by anybody, ever. Prosser asks, could we build a machine that detected the passage of time? No, not like that. What I mean is something that in an A universe would detect something and go bing and we'd know that time was passing and in a B universe it wouldn't detect that thing and it would go and we'd know that it wasn't. But whatever the machine detected would be there whether the universe was A-ish or B-ish. A theorists don't think that there's some kind of special A matter or A wave that the machine could detect that wouldn't be present in a B universe. All the same events would happen whether the universe was A-ish or B-ish, so there's nothing the machine could detect that would settle the question either way. And I think you can probably guess where we're going with this. The same is true of brains. They couldn't detect the passage of time. It could not be experienced. So any arguments for the passage of time which rely on experience must be wrong. Now, if you wanted to challenge Prosser's arguments, you might say that no, there would be different things happening in an A universe than there would in a B universe. For instance, maybe a B universe couldn't have genuine change or causation like McTaggart thought last time. So have a think about whether or not you buy what he's saying with this machine argument. As an added bonus, I actually know Dr. Prosser, so if there are any particularly insightful comments or questions, then I might send them to him, and maybe we could get a reply from a real philosopher. He also gave a public lecture on Does Time Pass? And you can listen to an audio recording of that lecture for free, I will put a link in the description. It's a public lecture, so it's pretty easy going. It talks about the difference between A theory and B theory, and some of the details of the theories, and also in particular how Einstein's theory of special relativity affected the metaphysics of time as well. What do you guys think? Do we experience the passage of time? Is it the sort of thing that could be experienced? Send me your questions, comments, screws, comebacks, fan mail, fan art, and fantastic responses underneath the video on Facebook, Twitter, or by email. Next time, I think we should do something a little bit more practical. So we could either talk about, should we support the troops, or should the government be secular? Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to join the Floss fans if you... First of all, yes, the background has changed because I am at home, I've finished university until September now, but let's see what the Floss fans had to say last time about time. Jacob Bayer said that time passes because we experience it. My reply to that is everything I've just said. Shyam Buddha asks, what if past, present and future are indexical terms like here and there and just point out where we are in time? And Planck London said, what if time doesn't pass but we move through time like we move through space? Yeah, what you've both jointly described there is B-theory. That's what B-theory says. John Sebastian and a lot of other people brought up Einstein and asked how does he impact on the discussion. Space and time are often modelled mathematically as one thing called space-time or Minkowski space. In addition to that, Einstein showed that there's no such thing as absolute simultaneity, whether two things occur simultaneously will depend on your frame of reference. These concerns would seem to support B-theory, and in particular the analogy B-theorists make between time and space. If you'd like to know more about that, again I recommend Dr. Prosser's lecture, which you can find in the description. Emmanuel Ruby on Twitter asked, if the present exists, how long is it? Like, is it instantaneous? Is it a Planck length? What's going on? Presumably, if the present existed, it would have to be instantaneous. You couldn't have bits of it that were earlier and bits of it that were later, which would occur if it was extended temporally in any sense, because that's a contradiction. If stuff's earlier and stuff's later, then it can't be present. Of course, B-theorists would say that the present doesn't exist anyway, so no need to worry. Hunter Tony 56 asked a very good question, why isn't McTaggart's paradox considered a popular argument anymore? Because it kind of begs the question against A theory. It assumes that if a proposition is true, for instance the proposition moment t has the property of presentness, that it must be true from whatever bit of time you look at it at. It must be true eternally. Whereas 
a theory seems to say that it's fine for a proposition to change its truth value over time. So it's kind of assuming that B theory must be true. If you want to know more about that, then again, Dr. Prosser talks about it in that lecture. Bob Sobol and Zippy Zack Fresh said that the present is the only thing that exists and the past and the future are not real. That view has actually been advanced before. It is called presentism. You are correct that it would avoid McTaggart's paradox, but it has its own big problems, one of which Connor McCloud kind of touched on to do with how can we talk about them truthfully if they don't exist, but that would take a whole other episode to go into, so we'll have to save that for another time. And that's all we have time for this time, so I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!